All right, got a very interesting video here to say the least. So it turns out that Allah is actually the biggest pusher of Islamophobia, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, just hear me out. Okay, what is Islamophobia? How is Islamophobia defined? Well, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Islamophobia is defined as an irrational fear of or aversion to or discrimination against Islam, okay? So notice that. Notice the wording of fear of Islam. So someone who is Islamophobic is someone who fears Islam, and someone who is pushing Islamophobia is someone who is pushing fear of Islam. And on a side note, the word Islamophobia is often abused and misused to slander anyone who expresses any legitimate criticism of Islam. You know, IG, you know, you know, for example, an example given would be a basically a Bible believing preacher who would come out and criticize Islam. He'd be slandered as Islamophobic. However, okay, again, keeping with the definition, if one is to be consistent with this definition of Islamophobia, that it's a fear of Islam, and that someone who pushes Islamophobia is pushing a fear of Islam, then it means that Allah himself is actually a promoter of Islamophobia. What do I mean by that? Well, because Allah himself wants non Muslims to fear Islam and be terrified of Islam. Okay, here's what the Islamic texts say. This is in the Hadith. This is Salia al-Bakari. Uh, this is the Hadith number 20, uh, 2000, 2,977. Hope I'm saying that right. This is what it says. Uh, this is, uh, it says, Allah's Apostle said, I have been sent with the shortest expressions bearing the widest meanings. I have been made victorious with terror, cast in the hearts of the enemy. And while I was sleeping, the keys of the treasures of the world were brought, or were basically brought to me and put in my hand Abu Hararia added, Allah's apostle left the world, and now you people are bringing out those treasures. Basically, that's what Hadith says. But notice that. I have been made victorious with terror. Okay? Going on, this is the Quran, chapter 8, verse number 12. It says, Remember when your Lord inspired to the angels, I am with you. So strengthen those who have believed. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So strike them upon the necks and strike them from every fingertip. Again, that's Surah 8, verse 12. This is uh, Surah chapter 8, verse 60. It says, And prepare against them whatever, obviously, whatever you're able of power and of uh, steeds of war, by which you may terrify the enemies of Allah. And know your enemy and others besides them, whom you do not know, you do not know whom Allah knows. And whatever you uh, spend in the cause of Allah will be fully repaid to you, and you will not be wronged. Again, Surah 8, 60. Uh, this is Surah chapter 3 verse 151 we will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve for what they have associated with Allah of which he had not been sent down authority which he had not sent down authority and the refuge will be the fire and wretched is the residence of the wrongdoers this is surah 33 verses 26 and 27 he says and he brought down those who supported them among the people of the book from their fortresses and cast terror into their hearts so that a party you that a party you killed and so, and you took captive a party, and he caused you to inherit their lands and their homes and their properties and the land which you have not trodden ever and ever as Allah over all things competent. So notice this consistent theme of casting terror into the hearts of the non-Muslims. Okay, so by the standards of the dictionary definition of Islamophobia, it's a fear of Islam. Allah himself is pushing and promoting Islamophobia or fear of Islam. Okay, so if a if a non-Muslim is being Islamophobic or fearing Islam. He's just doing exactly what Allah wants him to do. So, really, Muslims should be viewing Islamophobia as a good thing because their their own you know moon god wants us wants us you know like Christians for example to fear Islam. So, it, it's funny. That's the irony of the whole thing. Allah Himself is the biggest pusher of Islamophobia by the standards of what how Islamophobia is defined. And on a side note too, when it comes to fear. Uh, the Bible does teach the fear of God, but the fear of the Lord is connected with the parting from sin and hating evil and protection from evil. That's in Job 28, verse 28, Proverbs 8, 13, Proverbs 16, verse 6, and Proverbs 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord is likened to refuge and protection. That's Proverbs 29, verse 25, Proverbs 14, verse 26 and 27, and Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is also connected with knowledge and wisdom. That's Proverbs 9, verse 10, Proverbs 15, 33, and Psalms 111 verse 10 and also Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is actually in contrast with the hard, grievous way of sinners. That's Proverbs 23 verse 17 and Proverbs 10 verse 27. So the difference between Allah and Jehovah is that Allah deals with his followers as slaves and basically like punching bags and, you know, essentially uh, conscripts, essentially, in this, in this holy jihad. He has no real care or love for his followers. Meanwhile, Jehovah deals with his saints as family and adoptive sons rather than slaves. 
Okay, God's relationship with his saints is often likened to a relationship between a father and a son. That's in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 11, Psalms 103, verse 13, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 10 to 12, and 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. If you are saved and you sin, the Lord Jesus Christ chastens you, not because he takes some kind of sadistic joy in punishing sinners as Calvinism would have you believe, but rather because he loves you and is correcting you. That's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 11, and Revelation 3, verse 19. It's the same reason why you, if you're a father, would chastise your children if they do something wrong. Because God is your spiritual father and you're his adoptive spiritual son, and when you, wrong, when you do wrong, when you do sin, he's going to chasten you as a father would with his son. That's a big difference between Allah and Jehovah, is that Allah is basically no different than Satan when he deals with his, with his people. He has no real love, plain and simple. And once he's done with you, he just casts you away like Satan did with Judas. So anyway, I uh, wanted to point that out. The irony of the whole thing is that Allah himself is the biggest pusher of Islamophobia. And if you're a non-Muslim and you're fearing Islam, and by the way, too, if you're a Christian, you should be fearing nobody but God. But if we're to go with their definition, if I'm afraid of Islam, if I'm Islamophobic, I'm just doing what Allah wants me to do. So they shouldn't really be viewing it as a bad thing. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.